Hello there, THP 494 and 598. Matthew here again, uh, one more time, to talk with you guys a little bit today about um, the material we covered in class, and specifically what I want us to revisit, right, is to, to think about outputs. So we've spent a bunch of time in class talking about how we build things and how we construct applications that run here inside of our networking environment or as standalone applications that are windowed. But what does it mean when we start to think about how we get things out of Touch Designer and attach them to external displays? Um, what happens when we want to connect them to projectors and all of those kinds of scenarios, right? That's going to move us beyond just thinking about how we work with touch here inside of the networking environment and how we do our building and programming and push us to now start to think about, all right, so we have some things that we've built and how do we get them outside of here? How do we free them from what's actually going on here inside of our programming environment? So to get started, what we're going to uh, first dig into a little bit is the concept of windows. And we're going we're gonna to like do a little bit, uh, a couple things here to try and get a handle on what all that means. And I promise we're, we're going to get back to a place where we understand what's happening. Um, and so to get started, uh, let's go ahead. We're going to go ahead and work inside of project one. Why not? Uh, but let's go ahead and uh, get rid of all the contents in here, just like usual. So the first thing we're going to actually look at uh, is a component that we have not yet talked about in class, and that is, in fact, the window component. So here from the comp menu, let's go ahead and grab a window. And our window isn't going to do very much for us, right? So what we're going to start to think about is how we create floating windows that exist here inside of our operating system. And we might think of that in terms of like file windows or these actual like touch designer windows, all of those kinds of things. How do we make one of those? Uh, so to get us started, let's go ahead and add a movie file in. And this will help us start to think about what this actually means. So I'm going to grab my movie file in. I'm going to drag it on top of my window assign it as the parameter, or excuse me, as the operator. And now uh, here, uh, from my banana, over on the right hand side, you know, about all the way down here, I'm going to go ahead and open up this window. And I've got a two monitor situation over, going on over here, so it popped up over on my other monitor. So this is a great opportunity to look at one of the parameters here, which is this little monitor section right here. So I'm going to tell it that I wanted to open up on monitor one. Uh, and if we think about the way that Windows displays work, Right, if we look at our um, screen resolution, right, we can think about having two displays. Uh, in this case, my main monitor is in the zero position, and my secondary mon monitor is in the one position. So ignore these actual names on here that Windows, given, Windows has given them. So for us, here because this is on my secondary monitor, this is in the one position. So if I go ahead and open this, bada bing, bada boom, my banana opens right up here. And this opens up in a, like in a proper window, right? We can also see that we have lots of different options here. So in this case, I've told it to open on monitor one. That's great. I can see that it's justifying on the left and the bottom. I could justify it in the center, center bottom. So it's going to open up right here, right? I can have it open up center, center, any of those things. Let's open it again. Sure enough, there it is. Uh, I can see that it's can uh, I can have it set to be automatic in terms of its size from the component or top that it's looking at. It can fill the location. I can give it a custom resolution, like all sorts of different things, right? I can give it a very specific X and Y position, or I can just go ahead and center it. So lots of options there. And I can also turn its borders on and off, right? So if we open up one of these without borders on, we can see that I now no longer have those borders that are drawn around the edge of it. This also means I can't move it around, uh, but that's okay. That's going to be especially useful, right, if I start to think about situations where maybe what I want to do is I want to fill the location. And so if I open it now, this fills the entire area of this second monitor for me. That's great. Um, we're going to actually come back to that here in just a little bit. Okay. so. Windows are pretty sassy. They're really a, a wonderful tool at our disposal to give us lots of different kinds of options. And we don't just have to use um, texture operators to be associated with them, right? Because we can also use components. So let's go ahead and add a container component here into our network. Let's head inside our container. 
let's add uh, a button and a table. Right, we can imagine that what we might be building here is some kind of interface. I'm going to go ahead and set this particular component to have an alignment of left to right. Actually, let's do right to left. And let's justify horizontal over on the left. Right, so now I've got this lovely set of uh, table buttons, and then I also have a toggle button that exists in here also. So what if I wanted to take this component and give it its own window, right? So I've got another window here. I'm going to go ahead and associate them together. And if I open this window, oh, lo and behold, I need to turn my change my borders here. Let's turn these borders back on. So I open that up. And great, so now I've got a floating window, right, that has a, a whole other control panel inside of it. So if I open up this other window, oops, and let's turn the borders back on. Right, we can begin to see how this uh, quickly gives me access to all sorts of different kinds of components that I can start to noodle around with and uh, use in lots of different useful and exciting ways. Now, there are a couple of caveats that we need to be aware of when we're starting to think about how some of these windows work uh, and some of the limitations that we're bound to encounter when we're working with them. And that is, if you'll notice my frame count up here, uh, we'll see that when I grab one of these windows and reposition it, I'm actually um, stopping my rendering, right? If we watch down here in my timeline, when I grab onto this thing, I s pause the timeline. And when I release it, if we watch my frames, my frames per second, we can see that I'm introducing a kind of little stutter here into my network, right? So I'm kind of like shutting down and then ramping all the way back up. Now, this can um, create all sorts of problems for us in a live performance setting, right? So, for example, if we had a show that was happening, we probably wouldn't want to have a lot of windows open that we were moving around because that would mean that we would introduce uh, artifacts or stutters and stops inside of our actual playback. And that would make us a little bit crazy. We're also going to have... Um, some system frustration in terms of displays uh, when we have monitors, um, when we have multiple windows spread across multiple monitors. Um, and right now we don't see too much uh, problem here right in terms of our performance and that's because uh, we don't have a lot going on in here actually so we're not having to do a whole lot of exciting work and um, how these things are being drawn and redrawn. But when we start to have more complex uh, arrangements where we have whole user interfaces uh, and we have output modules that are actually outputting to projectors or other displays, we're going to start to run into some serious uh, and very frustrating performance issues related to our frame count and how quickly we're actually running. Uh, and that's one of the things that I can tell you is going to happen uh, based on the experience that I've had. Also, if you go ahead and look over the forum, there's an excellent section on system optimization, right? I would highly encourage you to head over here and look for the article on system uh, or on optimization, right? And there's all sorts of wonderful guidelines here uh, for performance optimization, right? CPU bottlenecks, GPU bottlenecks, how you can know what's going on, why you're having, you're having slow uh, performance speed, how to use the performance monitor. Lots of really interesting information here. So one of the things for us to consider then is how do we run into or how do we encounter problems and how do we wrestle with problems about how we deal with windows being drawn across multiple monitors because heaven knows that what I really need in a performance environment is that um, I'm going to want to draw something for every display that I have attached to my machine, and I'm going to invariably want to have some kind of control panel to manipulate that. And working with Windows is one of the things that we're actually going to start to think about, and that's actually one of the kind of like uh, secret ingredients to help us work there. Now, before we move on and start to look at some of the practical applications of what that actually means and how we actually suss that out and uh, do something with that, let's for one hot second take a look at this module here called Perform in our root directory. So in the root of our network, we see we have this thing called Perform, and we've learned that if we put ourselves into Perform mode, uh, that lo and behold, whoops, we go ahead and we get a... Uh, a dialog or a window that pops up here that's a perform window. So what is that all about, right? Like, 
where is this thing coming from and what's its deal? Well, if we look over here at the parameters associated with this, we can see that this is in fact a window. This is just a window component that's gone ahead and it's set up currently to have borders and it's set up to um, have the cursor visible. We can see that it closes on the escape key. It puts us in perform mode. All right, and so, and in fact, this opens on monitor zero. If we set it to open on monitor one, we'll see that when I enter perform mode, it opens right here for us. So this is just the same window component we've already been working with, which is fantastic, right? This gives us uh, a kind of access to understanding part of what's going on and really seeing that these windows that we're working with over here, these window components are in fact the same thing that we work with when we're thinking about the perform window, uh, which is in fact the same thing that's triggered when we enter perform mode. Right, so that means that all of the things that we just talked about in terms of the parameters that we can manipulate, whether we've got borders, uh, if it's always on top, if it opens on start, all of those kinds of things are, can all be manipulated here in our perform window that we use on a regular basis when we enter perform mode. Now there's one other thing that we should talk about here um, before we move on. And uh, to do that, let's go ahead and let's make some noise. So I'm going to add a noise chop here, and I'm going to um, ch -ch 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 make sure that we move this around a little bit. And you're welcome to just watch here. You don't have to follow along. Abs time dot seconds. And let's do abs time dot frame instead, just so we can really see this puppy move. Excellent. All right, so that's jamming right along. Let's add just like a couple more channels so we can really see some exciting things happen here. Great. All right, so, you know, we are cooking with gas here inside of this thing. And I'm putting it here in the background just because we're going to want to see uh, an interesting thing that happens here. So in my window, and let's use a smaller one because this will be easier to see, right? So if I open this up, we can see that lo and behold, this puppy opens up, right? And I can see that my network is still running and everything is looking copacetic and i um, very happy with all that, all of what's happening here. Now, drawing the actual network environment and keeping the network environment updating isn't necessarily the best use of all of our resources. Uh, in fact, in a performance setting, we probably don't even want to really worry about what's going on here in our networking environment because if we've properly set up our application, we only really want to work with the interface that we've built for it. We don't want to do any noodling in the actual programming environment if we can help it. And we'll notice that we have this thing called perform mode. So if we turn perform mode on for our window, what will happen is that when we open our window, we will actually stop drawing, we'll stop refreshing our uh, our network, right? So our application is still humming right along and it's still working really hard, but we've gotten back any of the resources that are associated with actually drawing the networking environment. And that's going to be something really important for us to hold on to and think about because when we go to set one of these uh, applications up to run in perform mode, uh, frequently one of the things that's important for us to think about is that in perform mode, uh, we get back a bunch of the resources that might normally be allocated to getting our network set up and rendering the network, the programming environment and all sorts, all manner and sorts of things that uh, we actually don't want to think about. And in fact, we really don't want our application to think about when we're operating in a performance setting. So it's just important for us to know that's going on back here. Now, that also means that my ability to manipulate some of these things uh, is complicated. So Hopefully, if I use the escape key here or close this, when I close the window, we can see that it's taken us out of perform mode. Excellent. All right, so hold on that to that in your brain. That's going to be real important for us in just uh, a little bit. So the next thing we can start to think about, right, is that if this perform window is what I want to work with, how do I start to really take advantage of what that is and what that means? And how can I really, like, dig in and kind of enjoy um, what I can get out of that particular thing. All right, so let's go ahead and add a component or add a container. We're going to call this Windows, and let's just put all this stuff inside here. Copy into. We'll get rid of it. We can double check, make sure it's all there. Looking good. 
And next, what we're going to do is we're going to move on from here just a little bit, and we're going to start to think about, all right, well, what does it mean when what we want to think about is creating something for live performance? How do we start to kind of build those arrangements in our head and consider how we put that together? All right, that's coming in our next installment, and I will see you in just one moment.